Anyone who has ever tried to find love online will tell you that it's a real struggle. It's hard to make a connection on the usual apps, and it's even harder to know if you're getting the authentic version of that person. Keyhole makes everything easier. When you match with a prospective partner, Keyhole feeds you deeply personal information about them, using material sourced under the anti-terrorism clauses of the Patriot Act and the CIA's Key Score Internet Surveillance Program, putting credit reports, bank statements, blood tests, and medical records at your fingertips. Johnny might seem like he has it all together, but why does he still pay for three different Netflix accounts? Kyle might say he's a red-blooded American, but why does he read so many Wikipedia articles about 9-11? Sasha might be a 10, but she certainly looked more like a 4 in the ultrasounds taken when her mother was four months pregnant. No thanks. Keyhole. Know the whole story. Welcome back to Killjoy. I'm Ezra Snipes, subbing in for Amy Upright. This is the story of the murder of Joy Ford, who was cruelly relieved of her life in 1987. But now it's also the story of a rogue podcaster who set fire to a forest and is on the run. That's right. Amy is confirmed to be alive. The thoughts and prayers paid off. Now, we don't know about her current whereabouts, but we do know that she didn't die because a local journalist found her under a bridge. This audio comes from a local television broadcast. The fire that isolated the town of Sharon's Valley has finally been brought under control. There was some confusion about how the fire started until an American radio broadcaster published an episode of a controversial podcast series exploring the murder of local woman Joy Ford in 1987. Recordings were seized that document host Amy Upright starting the fire. An extensive search was mounted for the journalist and local 17-year-old Noah Williams, her associate and possible lover. Now, in a News Pump exclusive, we crossed to reporter Mary Ngata Walker, who has spoken to Ms Upright. Hi, Mary. Hi, John. The town of Sharon's Valley is singed, defeated, dejected, charred and burnt. The culprit, Amy Upright, a junior producer for Chicago-based broadcaster CBF. I found her under a bridge where she was bivouacking with an illegal immigrant from France, who I'm happy to say has since been deported. What can you tell us about that interaction? That's a nasty scratch you've got there. When I approached the bridge, Upright appeared to be eating fistfuls of lollies, John. When she saw the camera crew approaching, she attempted to flee on all fours like some kind of panicked stoat. I then tackled her to the ground. There was a brief physical altercation, and yes, she did scratch my face, John. Mm. Was Noah Williams present? He was not, Upright claimed. She also claimed that I was, quote, not a real journalist and that I should back off, bitch. What happened next, Mary? She ran off into the bushes like an American ferret. But don't worry, John, I'll trap the little minx yet. That was Mary Nata Walker, News Pump's rural reporter. So, Amy's alive, which is good news. She's also being hunted like a deer through the woods, which is bad news. Events in Sharon's Valley are having wider effects. Late last night, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinta Ardern, gave this statement to the press gallery in Wellington. This is unprecedented behavior. I and we strongly condemn what has happened. Does this affect the conversation around immigration policy in this country? Uh, That question is irrelevant. Uh, On a global scale, this is just a bushfire. But on a local scale, this is a huge bushfire. Massive, unprecedented, unlawful, corrosive. It's really bad. It is not good for our well-being. And do you think that this will reopen the Gary Ford case? What do you remember about the Joy Ford murder? Uh, not a lot. I was only a few years older than baby Neve when it happened. Uh, look, I don't want to be mean because she's worked really hard on it, uh, but the podcast is unlistenable. 
And look, I'm working on a podcast myself, and it's really hard to make it sound good. But I'm relentlessly positive that this is positively terrible. And the native wildlife in that area is under threat. I reject her claims that she didn't mean to start a fire. She's a corrosive woman, having a corrosive effect on the New Zealand ecosystem. The corrosive young men of New Zealand, uh, and not to mention the corrosive relationship New Zealand has uh, with the American government. It's all incredibly stupid. It's fake news. It's f***ed. Prime Minister, Prime Minister. Things have really escalated. So please, Amy, if you're out there, give us a call. I'd hate for you to draw this out as long as possible, causing an international spectacle before eventually making a tell-all confessional series about how it all went wrong. I'm Ezra Snipes. Thanks for listening. This literally means people of the forest. These grand, elegant creatures are in many ways representative of all that is good about the planet. They are life, freshness, the air and the jungle, and the forest. They're us. When we look at them, it's a mirror showing us, me and you. But these great animals are under threat. Orangutans are just one of many kinds of animal threatened by climate change, deforestation, and overdevelopment. But there's a new threat on the block. Tobacco. Tune in to CBF's new limited series where we take a deep dive into rocketing rates of cigarette addiction among the orangutans of the Sumatra Peninsula and the brave team of volunteers who are trying to save them. So what we hope, right, is that we can get these uh, cheeky fellas off the cigarettes, uh, which will eventually kill them, uh, unfortunately, uh, and replace those cigarettes with the vapes or the vape pens, which also, you know, will probably kill them, but it will happen much more slowly. Agent Orange. Available wherever you get your podcasts.